Hey there, it's Ben Housel here, and here in this tutorial, we're gonna be having a look at how we work with Luca FX's Progress Bars plugin for Final Cut Pro 10. Now, there are two volumes of the Progress Bars plugin um, available from FX Factory, who are kindly sponsoring this video. Um, but basically, each of those has kind of different Progress Bars um, available within it. So take a look at both of those and see which one you need. Um, install the free plugin demo uh, from FX Factory, which you can do with all the plugins on FX Factory, and take a look at uh, those and see if they're suited to your Final Cut Pro 10 projects. We're also going to be looking at how we work with color correction adjustment layers. In this tutorial, we'll have a look at how we can animate type um, quickly and easily in Final Cut Pro 10. Uh, and these tips are kind of drawn from one of Brett FX's tutorials. I definitely recommend going and checking out his channel as well and having a look at some of the tutorials he has for things like masking, uh, things like animating type, uh, some definitely some cool stuff available on his YouTube channel. So without further ado, let's dive in and have a look at how we create this infographic in Final Cut Pro 10. So we're gonna dive right in here and have a look at the Luca visual effects progress bars, in particular, this minimalist circle that we can use um, to create these stats coming up on screen in this infographic. And we'll talk a little bit about some of the color adjustment that I've done uh, that will enable the text or enable your text to kind of pop out from the background as we go through. So we're gonna jump into a new timeline here and start setting this up from scratch. So we'll go to file, new and project to set up a new project timeline. We'll call this global stats. And we're gonna set this up at 1080p, 1920 by 1080. If you don't see these manual settings, uh, then just click the use custom settings option and that will allow you to kind of set things up as you want to. So then we'll click okay here and we have our new blank timeline. Now the one thing we're gonna borrow from the previous timeline is just this short edit of videos from here. We'll copy this and basically uh, we'll paste that on and we've got our video with some short transitions running from a boat to roads and then to a train to kind of match the stats that we're gonna throw up on screen. I'm gonna use the Shift and Z shortcut just to get that all to fit into my timeline there. So we'll roll back to the beginning here and the next two layers we're gonna add here are our adjustment layer. And uh, now you can get a whole bunch of free adjustment layers um, online, but I am gonna use the Ripple Tools Complete adjustment layer. Um, which you can also get from FX Factory. I'll stretch this out. And basically the adjustment layer allows me to change the color of all these clips in the background all in one go. So basically I've stretched my adjustment layer above all these clips. And now when I select it and come to my color adjustment up in the inspector, uh, if you don't see the inspector, just go to window, show in workspace and check the inspector. That will bring your inspector up. And now if we come to the little triangle here, which is our color corrections, we're gonna work on the color board option. And basically what I wanna do is lift up my blacks, drop down my whites, and then lift up my mid-tones. And basically what we're doing here is kind of squashing the image. So you can see everything becomes a little bit gray. And then I'm gonna drop down my master level here, which is going to mean this is a bit darker. And it will mean that basically the text will pop out when we kind of put it on top here. So that's the first step. And then we're gonna come to our type tools here. So I'm gonna come to my build in out titles and we're gonna use the custom titles. Now there's a great tutorial by Brett FX that shows you how to use the custom titles to time titles to come on screen. Um, and this is basically something I learned from him. So I'm gonna stretch this out. And this is the type at the top. So we're gonna type in global transport stats. I'm gonna use the bold 2D style and then we'll just lift this up to the top. And basically with this particular style, we can have it animate onto screen. So I'm gonna to come to my type options here and I'm gonna change the imposition. So I need to bring my playhead back to the beginning and I'm gonna drag this imposition across to the right. Okay, so I'm going all the way to the right if you hold down shift when you do this, then things will move a bit more quickly. And that's the first of two things I'm gonna change here for this, the in position and also the in unit size. So I'm gonna change this to word rather than character. So basically what we're gonna have here is our words are gonna animate on and we'll leave that one at that. Although we will select this word transport in the middle just to give it a different color. So I'm gonna scroll down to my face here and we will select a 
greeny blue here and that looks good so basically I have my words coming on the screen here and now we're going to jump into the Luca progress bar so I'm going to scroll up on the left here to my generators and I've got my Luca visual effects progress bars and in here you can see we've got a ton of different progress bars that we can use from equalizers to gears to loading screens um, step by step progress bars sci-fi progress bars and often these have kind of drop zones that you can drop your own images into and stuff like that we are going to stick with this minimalist circle it's going to kind of suit our needs for this particular example and also let us see how those kind of progress bars are set up so i'm going to drag this down so this is going to be my shipping stats so basically you can see at the moment my stats are coming on screen very slowly um, so i actually want them to kind of whiz on screen by around this point by the first edit point so I'm going to come here and just increase the speed of my stats. So basically I can ramp up the speed here. So now things are getting a little bit faster. And if I come to the end here, and I'm just going to use the shortcut Alt and the right square bracket to trim that clip, you can see now that I've sped that up, my stats come on screen nice and quickly. So by speeding things up in the inspector at the top right, and also by shortening the clip, things speed up a little bit at the beginning. So we can see this has sped up a bit. So we'll change a couple other things here. So I'm going to select my minimalist circle. I am going to clamp my percentage. So we're going to say that 25% is the amount of shipping. And now you can see my stats are actually finished way too soon. So I need to kind of come to the end here and slow this down because I do want it to take up this period of time. So basically now, you can see we slow that down again and things are working nicely. So we've got that timed with the ship in the background nicely. So now we're going to position this. So we can use these on screen controllers to rescale and position our stats. And you can see my numbers get a little bit small here. So we're going to come across to the right hand side here and we can change the font. So I'm actually going to change my font here to Arial Black, and then I'm going to increase the size of the text as well. So basically we can lift the size of the text up. And so now if we play this through, you can see we get this nice little animation in the box. We can also do things like changing the, the ring color here, obviously. So I could choose a different color. Let's go for a nice magenta. And I can also change the position of the type. I don't need to in this example. Um, but I can also, in here as well, change the size of the, the ring as well. So basically, I've got my type size down here. If I come up a little, I can change the ring width. So I can have a little bit more color in there. And I've got some other options for the opacity um, of different elements in there as well. So the ring opacity and the color opacity. I'm going to leave them both at 100%. And now you can see when we play this through, we get that flowing on screen nicely. So let's work on our cars here. So we've got our road transportation. And I'm going to just hold down the Alt key and duplicate this up and move it across a little bit. So basically now you can see I've got an animation starting in exactly the same spot, which is not what I want. Um, so I'm going to actually move this a little bit differently and one of the reasons for this is just to kind of keep a tab on where things are and actually I've noticed this is still a little bit too big so before I duplicate this I'm just going to drop the size down otherwise I won't fit all three in that space so we'll just duplicate that again now and instead of moving this with this on-screen controller I'm actually going to come up to the video options and use the Y position just to drop that down. And just by dragging across on the number here, I can keep things a little better lined up so I'm not changing the X position, which would kind of happen when I move this around like this. So again, we'll just trim this. So I'm gonna use Alt or Option and the right square bracket to trim that. And we will have another animation coming on there. I'm gonna change the percentage here. So let's say that for 
road here, we will have a higher percentage of translation. So we'll have this kind of move around a bit further. And I want this to finish in the same time frame. So basically, this is still moving uh, after the transition. So I'm going to select this and then just speed it up a bit so that it is all done around about this point. So I can just play with the percentage clamping and the speed so that there's a kind of nice flow to these. So we have the 24% and the 62% and then we'll have the rail. These aren't going to add up probably. So I'm going to move this third layer down and I'm going to come to my video options up here and I'm just going to hold down shift as I drag this down and I'm just going to eyeball this. It looks like I might need to shuffle things a little bit around. So actually we're going to select my text here. Just move this up. And we'll actually select all the text here and just drop the size down a little bit. So now if we select these, actually we'll come back a little bit here and we're going to use the scale option in our inspector to nudge these down in size. So I'll just go where I can see them all and we're going to drop these down in scale a little bit. So we'll go down to 0.2 or 0 0.15 for each of these. So I'm, basically, I'm deliberately typing in my scale up here so we get these all exactly the same size. So now if we come back to my video options where we've already nudged these, I'm just going to relocate these all a little bit so that things are nicely spaced out. And I will trim down this top layer. So Alt and the right square bracket again and we can play that through. And again for the minimalist circle for this last option which is rail. Um, we will just come to the end here and I'm going to change this down and clamp the, the rail option at we'll say 12% and I want this again to be finishing as we get to here so I'm going to slow this right down so we can play this through and we can see that's as slow as we can get for 12% so we'll leave it at that. So now you can see if we play this through, we're going up to 24%, quickly up to 62%, and then slowly up to 12%. And now we want to pop the, the text in here. So we're going to do this again with the, the custom type layer. So basically, if I come up to my type options and to build in out, I can drop my custom type layer anywhere here, really. And so we've got C, road, and rail. In our type options for this one, we are going to type that in. So C, road, and rail. And I'm going to line this to the left so they're all kind of nicely lined up. We'll position this up here and switch it to the bold 2D style. And so for this, basically, all I need to do is select all my type and increase the line spacing until things line up with those three graphs that I have uh, growing onto the screen. So now you can see we have those graphs growing on and we have the text there as well. So again, for these three lines of text, I'm going to come to my type options for the custom option. I'm going to change my in unit size to word or line. It doesn't really make any difference for this. And I'm just going to change the in spread uh, to 0.8, uh, which is a tip from Brett FX. Thanks, Brett. And then the last thing I need to do here is come back to the beginning and just change the in position. And I'm going to hold down shift as I scrub to the right on the in X position. So it's all the way off. And now we'll see that these will flow in nicely. Now, obviously, the timing is not right for all of these. So what I want to do is actually hold until we reach the end of uh, C here. So I'm just using the back arrow to basically get to the point I want to kind of pause this. And I can't pause this here, I need to actually make it into a compound clip to do that. So if I go to File, New and 
compound clip. Alt and G is the shortcut for that. Then basically we can now make that a compound clip and then with that compound clip selected here, I can use Shift and H to hold that there. And I'm actually gonna drag this back here. So now you can see C is gonna pop on. So then when road begins, we want road to pop on. So I'm just gonna to toggle the hold there so that the timing is right. And we'll come back. I'm just using my left cursor to scrub back a little bit. And now I can hold down Shift and tap H again to add another hold in. And we will then hold on road until rail begins and the timing for that is about right but we can also kind of juggle the hold there a little bit as well so now if i come to the end here and do alt and the right square bracket i can now have my animation here working nicely so we have our text coming on we have the stats for c so you can see here uh, we've got our luca visual effects animation happening there um, and it's timing quite nicely with the text. We've got our little infographic here now nicely set up. Um, there is a new version um, of the Luca Visual Effects progress bar, so volume two. Um, and basically, volume one and volume two just really have different uh, kind of animations in them. So when you're planning a project, um, if you do need those kind of progress bars included in your edits, then do just go and have a look at which one um, has the, the kind of progress bars that you need for your edits. So you can see volume two, um, we have some stats and exit points and stuff like that in there. And um, we have some different spinning progress bars and progress rings as well. Um, and some kind of new animations as well uh, that we can incorporate into our video edits. So definitely go take a look at the Luca Visual Effects progress bars um, available on FX Factory. Uh, and thanks again to FX Factory for sponsoring this video. Hopefully there's been some useful stuff in there aside from the, the kind of plugin work we've done. Um, and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.